Hey guys, welcome to the flight deck of the Embraer E-175 by FlightSim Studio for Microsoft FlightSim. In this video, we're going to cover a cold and dark startup. In fact, two different methods because one, you might want to get into the cockpit and get started as quickly as possible. So I'll follow a quick 10 step guide to get everything going. And after that, we'll run through the checklist per the FlightSim Studio provided documentation. I'll put a link for that in the description below. Please bear in mind that this is uh, version 0.8.7. So it's a pre-release beta model. Uh, even though the aircraft will release to the public as early access, some things will still not be implemented. I'll we'll verbalize which ones though they are as we go. So without further ado, let's dive into the quick method of taking off. And if you want to uh, skip ahead to the full procedure, then you can click the chapters in the description below. Overhead panel, battery one, battery two on, go to the APU, select that on. Lights externally, nav, red beacon, internally, no smoking, fasten seatbelt, and emergency lights. If you started, go ahead and start the engines. That's the right engine started, now start the left. Left engine started, overhead panel, APU off, pump 3 alpha on, flaps, stage 2, projected takeoff, selected for auto brake, taxi lights on, parking brake release, get yourself to the runway. Prior to takeoff, you can check your takeoff configuration if you wish. And apply power and off you go. Okay, so we've seen the quick way of starting this aircraft up. This time we'll take a little bit more time about it, follow the checklist a little bit. I'll add some poetic license for things that are missing or things that I'd prefer to do in terms of the flow. Um, but remember the checklist link is in the description below. The so flight deck checked make sure everything is secure emergency equipment is behind the seats we've got pins over to the right hand side there's an axe uh, i believe behind the captain seat maintenance status we'll say that is checked and we are good to go i prefer to have a look down to the center panel and do the safety checks here so the parking brake is applied the speed brake is closed the thrust levers are in the idle position and the flap and slat lever matches the external which is up the landing gear lever is down and the start switches are both to stop now we move to the overhead panel, we can employ a A320 style flow to it, so top to bottom, left to right. We'll follow the checklist for this portion. Batteries 1 and 2 are off. Fuel pumps 1, 2 and DC are off. Emergency lighting is off. Windshield wiper off and off. Hydraulic pump systems 1, 2 and 3 Bravo are to auto. System 3 Alpha is to off. Now we can go ahead and switch on the batteries. One and two. I go ahead and check the enunciator to make sure all the lights are illuminating. I would also go ahead and check the fire extinguisher panel, but that is not yet implemented. You'd expect lights, tones, and ICAS messages to accompany that test. Also not in the checklist, but I would do that at this point is the passenger signs. I'll go to on. And then if you open the door to the rear cabin, you see the overhead lights are illuminated. I'm going to switch those back to the armed position and before I forget I'll switch the no smoking and fasten seatbelt signs on. External lights will switch the nav light on. Finally electrical power established. We can either use the GPU or the APU. So for now we'll use the GPU. Before start checklist. We go ahead to the electrical page. Just out of interest you can see that the GPU is supplying all the power to the aircraft systems. Fuel quantity, check. We go to the fuel page, and we see it listed here in pounds, 10,140. You can also check it on the iPad, 4,600, I believe that is in kilos. I'm not going to be programming the MCDU today. We'll put a few things in at this point though. So 4577 seven will be my squawk. I'll set 111.35 as my ILS for runway 23 at South End. And remember, if you mouse over the MCDU screen, you can type with the keyboard. Crew oxygen, check. Now the oxygen is the black and red you see on the left. It's one over by the first officer and also behind the first officer's seat. Altimeters set and cross-checked. 
altimeter indicator underneath the altitude on the primary flying display and also on the backup display. You can click between inches and hectopascals. You can rotate to set or click in for standard. You can rotate the backup display as well or just press the B key to make sure they're both set. B992 and standard appears to be the Q&H of the day. Flight instruments set. I'm going to set up for the ILS. So on the autopilot panel, I'll press V and L twice. I can get the localizer 1, 113, correction 11135. And I'll change the course to 233. Done. Flight director is selected. Your damper is enabled. We'll go heading select and 080 for the departure heading. Ish. We'll go speed set to 210. Go altitude to 3,000 feet or flight level 30 because we've got 1013 or 2992 in as our altimeter setting. And we'll select the vertical speed once we're able. Passenger signs are already on and takeoff briefing we can complete. Moving on for the rest of the before start checks. Seatbelt and shoulder harness check. Takeoff performance set. Now if you've programmed the MCDU you can check that at this stage. For me I'm going to use 110 to 120 knots for rotate speed and that'll do for me. Auto brakes, rejected takeoff. Trims. Lower right of the ICAST panel, you can see roll, your and pitch should be centered, centered, and I believe four up. Doors and windows closed. A couple of options here. On the iPad, you can see yellow. And on the status page, on the multifunction display, you can see they're indicated red, and they'll tell you which doors are open. On the iPad, you can click them to close. If you wish, you can also move around in the cabin, get to the door and click it from the inside. And don't forget your windows. We're ready to start. We're not going to do a pushback. We'll start in place and then taxi on from here. If you haven't already started the APU, you're going to need to do that. So we'll start the APU. APU indications are given on the ICAS or just beneath. Out of interest, we'll check the electrical page. System electrical. Now we can see that the GPU has been removed from the circuit. The APU is now running and providing the power to all the systems. So for the start checks, We'll go red beacon on. Transponder on. Parking brake can remain on. And engine start and sequence. We'll skip ahead to the engines both being started. Once the engine start has been completed, we'll set flaps to two, or as required. APU, I'm going to switch off. Hydraulic system 3 alpha pump on. Flight controls, check. Left, right, up, down, rudder left, rudder right. Good checks. It's worth noting that the APU will take about a minute to cool down and then switch off. For taxi, Taxi light nose and side on. Parking brake release. And now we're good to taxi to the runway. This may be an issue. Four takeoff checks. Cabin secure, doors closed, take off data review, checking the MCDU if you've programmed it. ICAS, looks clear, brake temperatures. On the status page, 113 versus 111 by the looks of it. Take off configuration, check. No take -off. Parking brake still applied, that makes sense. 
Lights, strobes, landing and inspection lights all on when clear for takeoff. With the parking brake off, double check, take off configuration. Rotate. I'm using 10 degrees nose up. Positive rate. Gear up. As an aside before completing descent checks, the after takeoff checks do not include removing the auto brake from RTO. I recommend selecting it to off. Descent checks. Lights and seatbelt signs remain on. Altimeter, set as required. Cross check. Landing data, review from MCDU if entered. I'm going to be using 130 to 135 knots. Auto brake, set. Seat belts and shoulder harness, checked. Approach briefing, complete. Before landing, checklist. Flight attendants, notified. Landing gear down, three greens. Flaps, in this case, set full. Landing lights, on. thrust engaged, auto braking in progress, after landing checks, lights as required, landing lights off, strobe lights if they were on, switch them off, inspection lights off, flaps up, trim, centred, centred, four up, APU, if required, start. And practice doing checks whilst trying to steer yourself around a taxiway. That all seemed to go reasonably well. The only thing I think I forgot was the uh, strobe lights on the takeoff. Disappointing, but never mind. And of course, a little bit of <laughs> awful taxiing whilst doing checks. Blessings. Oh, we've got a fire engine to meet us. What do they know that I don't? So the last set of checks is the shutdown checks, and they're really simple as well. How oh, disappointingly, is in my parking space. Good sir, do you mind? I have to find somewhere else to, to park it up. If you're still watching, thank you very much. Hopefully the content was decent. If you thought it was good, then hit that like button. If you want to see more or you want to support the channel, then consider hitting that subscribe button. It's all very much appreciated. But I hope you enjoy the Embraer E175 as much as I've been doing. It is pretty simple to use. Looks great. And is satisfying when it all goes right. What's I do? We'll go for gate 9. And to finish, shutdown checks. Transponder is off. Chocks and brakes. Set engine. Before we do that, we'll confirm the APU is on. And it indicates engines one and two off. Hydraulic pump three alpha off. At this stage, you can switch off the rest of the systems, shut down the power, and back to a cold and dark state. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.